everyone and welcome to Totally Holistic Health and today I'm going to show you a very short yoga sequence that will help opening up the hips. Um, now people who tend to work in offices a lot tend to find that the hips are quite tight and the problem they've got if you have tight hips it does tend to um, cause restriction in the lower back which can actually cause lower back pain. Um, so it's really, really good just to help release the hips a little bit, which will help um, blood flow to the lower back and obviously can help relieve lower back pain. Um, also, it's um, really important so because it does get that blood supply to the sort of abdominal, abdominal area. Um, it's also good for, for digestion. It's also good for um, female health as well. And just generally, it's really nice to get the blood circulating in that particular area anyway, because it's really good for your health. So we're going to do a few hip openers. Um, so what we're going to do is starting off, we'll probably need, um, if you have got a yoga belt, um, use a yoga belt. If you haven't got a yoga belt, then you can actually use just a dressing gown um, cord or a dressing gown belt, which works just as well. Okay. So we're going to start off on our backs. And the main thing really is to remember is really just listen to what the body's telling you. If you do find that some of the structures are a little bit strong um, or you're feeling uncomfortable, just, um, you know, ease off a little bit it's not about um we're not trying to um overextend ourselves we're just really trying to listen to what our body's telling us so again just be really mindful of where you are in that particular posture okay so it's not we're not stretching to the to the nth degree that's not really what you're about so we're going to start off on our backs now if you have got lower back issues you might find actually having your knees bent is much better but if you haven't we're going to have a nice long full body stretch so we're going to push the heels away from us, bring the arms over the head and just feel a lovely long stretch in the front and the back of the body. Maybe pushing the heels away if that feels comfortable. Feel that lovely stretch in the back of the body and then maybe pointing the toes and just feel that lovely stretch in the front. And then just enjoying that sensation. Okay, so we're going to start with the right leg. So we're going to make sure that the left leg is nice and strong. As I said, if you've got issues with your lower back, make sure that you bend that knee. If you're feeling okay with your lower back, keep that nice and strong. I'm just going to bring that right knee into the chest. So we're not going to overstretch. We're just feeling that sensation. It's a lovely, lovely, relaxed um, stretch into that hip. Just enjoy it. And then we're going to get the belt or the dressing gown cord if that's what you're using and pop that over the sole of the foot and we're going to bring that leg up into the air. So it's not about overstretching this hamstring, we're just going to be really gentle with it. Just see if we can maybe bring that knee slightly close to the chest. Again, if you do need to bend that knee, again, that's absolutely fine. We're not getting having a really, really strong stretch. It's more of a case of just being gentle with ourselves. So it should be not too extended on that hamstring, but just sort of so you can just feel that sensation. Okay, so just enjoy that for a minute. Keeping that bottom leg strong, it just gives you the whole, whole bit of stability. And then placing the belt into the right hand. We're going to bring the left hand out to the side just to give ourselves a little bit of, um, keep it stronger. And we're just going to move that right leg out to the right. Again, we're not overextending this. What we're trying to do is keep both buttocks actually on the mat as well. So this is why it's important to keep that bottom leg really strong. So we're just going to make sure, even just put your hand on that hip actually, maybe if that feels more secure. Just bring that leg out to the side. And again, if you do need to bend that knee, it's not a problem. We're actually opening the hips here. We're not going to try to, you know, we're not overextending that knee. So it's just a hip opener. Just bring that leg out to the side. And again, just feel any sensations. If it hurts, don't do it quite so much, obviously. And just enjoying that stretch. I mean, some people you might find you may be able to get it to there. Again, that's absolutely fine. The more you practice it, the more open it will feel. And now I'm going to bring that back leg back to centre, changing the hand. So bring the belt into the left hand, bring the right hand out to the side for support. Now, I probably would advise bending the knee now. We're just going to bring that across the left side of the body. That's quite an intense stretch on the band of the ice and the outside of the uh, leg. So if you are a sports person, you might find this quite strong. Um, you might find it in the hip, you might feel it into the knee or into the back of the knee. 
Again, if it hurts, don't do it too much. But just enjoy that lovely stretch. And we turn that back to centre. And then just release that foot and just bring that knee into the chest just to release it a little bit. And we're going to swap legs. So again, bring that left knee into the chest. Make sure the right leg is very strong. Again, unless of course you've got lower back issues when I would advise keeping that bent. So bring that knee into the chest, just to relax that leg. Just feel that lovely stretch, that mobility in that hip. And again, get in the belt. Just going to place that over the ball of the foot and bring that leg up into the air. Again, keep that bottom leg really strong. It gives it really good stability. And again, don't need to actually stretch this leg to its full extent. Just keep that knee nicely bent and soft. And again, you're placing the hand on the left hip or the right hip to hold it down or bring the hand out to the side. We're just going to draw that leg across the outside of the leg. And again, you might find it more flexible on this side, and a lot of people do tend to find the left side more flexible, principally, I think, is because you've got the blood supply coming from the heart, and you just have more oxygenated blood in the left side of the body. And then drawing that leg back to centre, crossing over. Left hand out to the side, and we're just going to draw that leg across the right side of the body. Again, making sure that knee's slightly bent, and just being aware of any sensations in that hip. I know for me in particular, that really hits onto the, um, the hip bone there. So I'm going to be very gentle. And then releasing that back to centre, we're going to let go of the belt. We're going to draw both knees into the chest, just to release that lower back a little bit. So now we're going to go into sitting. So you can either just roll to the side and sit up, or if you want to, you can put your hand on the back of the knee and just come up to a sitting position. Okay, so we're going to go on to all fours now. So if you've got issues with your knees, um, try to make sure that you, put, you fold up the mat a little bit, so it just protect your knees a little bit. Do a bit of extra padding. Um, if you've got issues with your wrists, you can also roll the mat up at the front so you've got less um, pressure on the wrists as well, you've got less of an angle. But equally, make sure that you um, spread your fingers really, really wide. That'll just help protect the wrists a little bit. So the hands need to come underneath the shoulders and the knees need to come underneath the hips. And again, just enjoy the sensation of a little bit flat back. We're now going to just curl the toes under and we're going to push back into a downward dog. So we're going to push back with our hands, just straighten the legs. And again, just moving the hands or the feet if that's comfortable for you. It's quite strong in the arms, this one, so we're not going to stay in this, long, this position for too long for people who haven't done downward dogs before. And then we just walk out with the feet a little bit as well. So we're going to make sure the left hand, left foot is well planted. We're going to bring the right leg up into the air into a lovely three-legged dog. Now, to open up the hip a little bit more, it's also quite nice to bend that right leg. Just open up that hip a little bit more. It's nice. And then come back to centre. We're going to bring that leg now up between the hands. So if you can't leap it through, just drag it. Equally fine. So we're going to make sure the hands are either side of that front leg. And we're going to just drop that back knee. Make sure that foot's flat. Again, if you've got issues with knees, you can just roll up that mat again to make sure it's protected. So you should have a lovely stretch on that hip flexor there on the left side. And we're going to make sure that this foot is over, oh, this knee isn't overshooting our foot. It's basically going to be perpendicular to the ground. And again, just maybe walk backwards and forwards a little bit with that, just move it. Just 
so that the lovely stretch on that hip flexor, if it's too strong, obviously just be really careful, maybe bring that knee in slightly. And then walk from the right hand onto the inside of that right leg, walk that leg to the outside of the mat. And again, this might just be all you want to do. Again, it's really, really strong stretch just on the inside of that thigh. But if that feels okay and you want to just push it a little bit more, what you can do is either put the elbow into that knee or just push it away a little bit. Again, it's very, very strong. So just be really, really careful. If it's too much, just go back to either that position or that position. back onto the outside of that foot, put the foot back to centre and we're going to walk hands back so we're going to straighten that front leg, that right leg. So again, either toes up into the, towards the air or you can just straighten, just put stretch both sides, both equally is nice. Either side of that front foot, curl the toes under the left foot, bring the knee up, make sure the hands are well planted, and then come back into another downward dog. And again, just feel that lovely stretch in the back of the legs. I'm going to make sure the right foot is planted now, so we're going to bring the left foot into the air. So again, you can stay here, or if you want to open up that hip a bit more, just bend that leg, just open up that hip to the left. Come back to centre. We're going to bring that left leg between the hands. So again, just move it forward. Don't have to come through straight away, that's absolutely fine. It takes a while to practice that one. And bring the right knee down onto the ground and flatten that right foot. And again, just feel that lovely stretch on that lovely right hip flexor. And again, we just rock backwards and forwards a little bit. So if you can't get the angle, maybe just to bring that knee in slightly again. Just start from an easier option first and then just maybe slide that back. But the main thing is that this leg is actually perpendicular to the ground. Wonderful. So then we're going to bring the left hand on the inside of that left foot and walk the left foot out to the edge of the mat. And again, this might just be all you can manage again. This is absolutely fine. I mean, the thing with the yoga, it's not about uh, not being competitive. It's just doing what your body's telling you you can do. And some days you might find that you can. Some days you might find you can't. And um, that's absolutely fine. So again, if you want to stay here, that's fine. Or you can just you know, pop that hand onto that knee and just see if you can open up that hip a little bit more. Make sure you breathe as well. Breathing is really important. And bring that hand back and just walk the left foot in between the hands. And now I'm going to walk the hands back again just to stretch that front leg and just to release that tension that they've arisen in there. And straighten the toe. And then walk in the hands back again, either side of the feet. Turn the toes under, bring that knee up, and then bring the left leg to join the right into a lovely downward dog. Again, just feel that lovely sensation, that stretch on the back of the legs now. And we're going to walk the hands back to join the feet. I'm just going to stay in just a very gentle forward fold. With the knees bent, just for a couple of breaths. Before we roll up to standing. Okay. So now we've done lots of um, hip opening um, postures. We need to close up the hips a little bit. It's a really simple way of doing that. 
is in a standing pose you can do it sitting down as well in a different sort of pose but this is quite nice so we're going to bring the right leg over the left and we're going to just put our fingers onto our hip creases there and we're going to come forward from the hips and just see if you can bring your hands down so you don't necessarily have to touch the floor if you just can stop here that's absolutely fine but again bending the knees if you need to protect the back of the legs just bring the head down Again, this is a lovely, lovely stretch in the back of the legs. Really nice. And very gently rolling up to standing. Swapping legs. So we bring the left leg over the right. Again, hands in just in the hip creases there. Again, just coming forward. Again, bending the knees if you need to. Not going to put too much pressure on those knees. Just enjoying that lovely stretch. And then very gently rolling up to standing. Brilliant. So thank you very much for joining me on my hip opening. I hope that helps. If you've got any questions, just feel free to contact me. Um, I'll put my details um, underneath. Um, but also I'm sure you know where you can find me. Um, I look forward to catching up with you next time. Namaste.